Hello once again, I'm Martin Popoff. Welcome to Overkill Reviews. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This is my final review of 2017. Our record this week is actually the third of a trilogy. It's The New Reality by Operation Mindcrime out on Frontier Records, December 1st. A little bit about this band, fasten your seatbelts, it's a little complicated. Before this, there was a band called Queensryche, uh, but even before that, there was a band called Myth, uh, the pre-Queensryche band. And in that band, there was Randy Gain, uh, Kelly Gray, and Jeff Tate. So that's the nucleus of this band now called Operation Mindcrime. In between, there was this big band called Queensryche, progressive metal icons, platinum albums, double platinum albums, Rage for Order, the album Operation Mindcrime in 1988. Flash forward to 2012, Jeff wants to take it in a little bit more modern, atmospheric direction. Queensryche wants to keep it sort of progressive metal, emphasis on metal. They have a big legal uh, dust up. Eventually, Jeff gets the rights to the name Operation Mindcrime, and then he gets a deal with Frontier Records in 2014, and he decides to go super ambitious, and he's gonna make a trilogy of albums. He actually has achieved that, and all of these albums came out, you know, bing, bang, bomb, you know, one year after the next. The first one was, was called The Key, then there was The Resurrection in 2016, and now we have The New Reality in 2017. It's always going to be contentious. Uh, people are going to, you know, naturally fall into camps on these bands based on the personalities and the war that they had with each other starting in 2012. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get into the music and you'll see what I mean. Let's take a listen to our first clip. This is called It Was Always You. It was always you. Don't you point your finger. Don't pretend to lie. You've done nothing. There's something wrong here. All come and clear. I'm out of the What you're hearing is some pretty daring production here. You're hearing huge atmospheric drums. And I actually don't even know who's drumming here, whether this is a machine or not, because I actually emailed, um, Simon Wright is a bit of a buddy of mine. He's used to be in this band, but it sounds like he's not anymore. So this is either Brian Tichy or it's a mix of Brian and some electronic drums, but the drumming is a very big deal on this album. It's very uh, interestingly produced, it's clattery, there's some really neat off-time things going on. So you're hearing some great production here. You're also hearing um, Jeff Tate using a lot of different voices. I mean, let's not forget, this is supposed to be a trilogy. What does he say? He says it's about internet banking, virtual currencies, and stock trading. So what you're hearing there is, um, is a good uh, mix of all of these elements uh, building up to the idea that this is a progressive metal album. It's an aggressive album, it's not all this heavy, but you're, you're hearing uh, in this clip a lot of the trademark uh, unique sounds that you're going to be hearing on this album. We're gonna hear another little bit of It Was Always You. Uh, this is where it gets a little more atmospheric. Not sure what you're gonna think of this. There are certain options one must choose. give in and rely completely on the mercy of your accuser. So there you go, not metal, I suppose, um, and kind of strange. I mean, this is, uh, this is an example of the band getting uh, a, a little more atmospheric with less uh, guitars. Um, it gets even more atmospheric than this all over the album. There are, there are parts where there's no drums or guitars or anything, and it almost feels like more Pink floyd -y. And they do a great job of it, by the way, because Randy Gain, I think, is one of this band's secret weapons. But also here, you're hearing uh, horn sounds, and they're almost like the Kenny Loggins horn sounds where you know you don't know if they're synthetic they come from the keyboards or the real horns I don't think Jeff Tate is the kind of guy who gets his horns from a good place I think he gets them from a bad place like sting or something like that you know all that dated stuff from the 80s we don't like he's not getting it from Krautrock or Amandul 2 or the Allen Bone or Spock's beard has horns as well uh, they, they do cool things with horns I don't think this is the kind of prog band that does cool things with horns and it reminds you of the bad feelings we were all having when Jeff Tate was kind of steering Queensryche in a bad direction. You know, you know this, this clip, it's not feeling metal at all. So, so far, I'm still fairly undecided what I think of this album. Let's listen to another clip. This is Under Control. Run for cover, nowhere to hide. Better stay on this side of the line. Don't 
So there you go, we're back to something that feels more like heavy metal. But again, this is the kind of heavy metal that was contentious when Jeff was taking Queensryche in another direction. So one of the things that was happening with Queensryche is they were starting to downtune and have some of those slower, grungier, you know, Sabbath type uh, songs. So Under Control feels like a bit of that sort of uh, song. And again, you know, a another lightning rod in this band is Kelly Gray. He's coming from his Candlebox experience. Let's listen to a little bit of what he brings to the band. Kelly is the lead guitarist here, and no question, he's amazing on this album. That was something that had a, a, a little bit of, uh, a, a little hint of Tony Iommi and the wah-wah thing, and a little bit uh, sort of higher, squealier sound, but he does all sorts of great uh, things all over this album. They are really thinking seriously about making a great progressive metal album that doesn't have any of the sort of, um, you know, cheesy cliches of progressive metal. They are trying to do modern things. <laughs> The last clip that we're going to look at shows a different dimension for the band. This is called All For What. So that was interesting. I mean, here we have uh, a different sort of thing that they're addressing that we haven't really talked about yet. This has sort of a Zeppelin-esque Middle Eastern modality to it a little bit, but it also has, uh, again, they're always looking for inventive things to throw in. So this has, you know, fake or real, they're probably Randy Gain doing this, but it's the, it's the string technique that you would also, also get out of John Paul Jones at times. And again, you know, on top of this, we've got Jeff doing his very thespian thing. I mean, Jeff is an acquired taste this whole band, of course, is an acquired taste. You'll hear all over this album, and you hear a little bit on this, this clip, that he uses a lot of different uh, voices, uh, you know, probably to show different characters of all the things that are going on in this trilogy, but he also applies a lot of things uh, to his voice. He likes putting on a lot of effects. So, again, I think it's just a metaphor for uh, everybody on this album, when they're doing their job, they're looking for interesting things to do from track to track. Have I decided what I think about this record? I think I have. Let me explain in the verdict. Now, I'm not going to say this is a perfect album because, uh, as I was saying about the horns and some of the keyboard sounds, I find them a little bit jarring, a little bit dated, a little bit 80s. Yeah, and I also feel it drags a little bit towards the end. Um, you know, the last couple of tracks, I find that there's a little bit of uh, repeating motifs or I've heard too much of this stuff and I'm starting to get ear fatigue on the record. You know, one thing I like about this record is that it is so daringly progressive. He is trying to do new things. The amount of ear candy, the amount of production, the amount of interesting drumming and keyboards and five or six or seven different ways that we can hear Jeff Tate's uh, very controversial voice. The guitar textures, uh, the guitar soloing. There is so much to listen to on this record uh, just in terms of an audiophile experience. And I do love that there's also this little bit of an idea of, you know what, I'm gonna show up my old band. I'm gonna show up those guys and I'm not gonna be the Jeff Tate of the first solo album that had everybody up in arms because it was not heavy at all. So this is not the Jeff Tate saying, oh, I just, I love Pink Floyd and I'm as good as you 2 and I wanna make music like you 2 or be as good as, you know, make music that's gonna be everlasting as Pink Floyd. No, he's saying, I am gonna participate in this progressive metal arena, but I'm gonna do it, you know, my, my very smart, uh, my smart, sophisticated way. I'm, I'm gonna do it the way 
that a guy makes metal when he has a little bit of a standoffish attitude towards metal. And what happens when you get a guy like that, when they actually go and make heavy metal, they make some pretty cool heavy metal because they don't like the rules. They maybe don't even know all the rules because they don't listen to a lot of heavy metal, um, but they're also saying they want to break the rules. So this is loud, dramatic, crazy music, um, and it is squarely in the progressive metal thing. Um, but I think uh, there's just something about it that's a little more artistic than the other Queensryche, although I love the other Queensryche as well for completely other reasons, like I say. So I think I'm going to end up giving this four skulls out of five skulls. So don't forget, you can leave your own skull rating at bangertv.com, and we shall see you next year. When you're